okay first we will see today hidden parameters so what is hidden parameters so far right we are uh, creating input type equal to text and username and password we are adding and we can able to see that fields and we are filling mm -hmm. the fields and we are submitting correct yes so without filling the fields if you want to send some hidden parameters to your servlet so you don't okay. want to take any input from the user but still you want to send some information to the server okay so how to send that one so that kind of things you will see today so let me create a new project So I created new project hidden parameters. <clears throat> what I want to do, I want to copy the login HTML. So we have already written this HTML. So I, I just copied. So no need to rewrite again back. So this is our HTML page and we have username mm. and password. Two fields and login page. I mean login button. Okay. Web.xml. So here what I will do, I will register. Uh, we we no need all those things so we only one welcome page okay login dot html okay now if i'll deploy this one let me create one servlet before deploying creating servlet one creating servlet sorry uh, let me add it class name so i created servlet one so when I'm creating the servlet one, Eclipse will register that servlet in web.xml automatically. If you see there, servlet and URL pattern, everything came here. Okay. So you no need to do anything. So Eclipse will add everything. And you, see, you saw some errors. So to fix the errors, we need to add runtime. Right click, properties, and the targeted runtime, select Apache Tomcat 6. Okay. Okay. Now the errors are gone. And now, how to read that fields in servlet? So I have to read from request caret, request dot yes. mm -hmm. parameter. String username equal to request dot get mm -hmm. parameter. And here I need to give the username. Okay. In the similar way, I want to read password also. So how to read password? So here I had to give the password. Okay. So this is the way to read username and password. Let me display that fields. So let me display in response dot output stream Servlet output stream. Okay, now we have output stream. Basically, I want to print that username and password. How to print it? Okay. Print ln. First, I want to display username. Username colon. What is the username? Plus un. Now it will display username. I want to display password also. How to display? Change the label. And here, let me add it to password. Okay, now our code is ready. Let me deploy and we'll see whether we can able to read the username and password.
so now i can able to see the username and password let me add username is abc and password is xyz submit it okay so let me there is some hidden parameters is it deployed or not okay let me open a new browser and we will try so most of the times the eclipse browser will not work properly oh is that okay so basically we need to change the application name what is the application name hidden parameters and now yes in our i copied login.html right so there mm -hmm. i need to change the servlet name as servlet1 so it is there login servlet so i created servlet is servlet1 right yes so that is the problem and i had to give the method as a get now it will work now it should work okay now i got the username and password what i want to do now no. i want to give username is abc and password is pqr and let's submit it so now i'm getting username abc and password is password. pqr Correct. So whatever yes. I'm entering, yes. basically I'm getting same thing. I'm not getting anything extra. Correct. Whatever I'm entering, I'm getting yes. same thing. So basically, <clears throat> from my form, right? I want to send another field, which should user should not see the field, and but still I want to send that field to the server. So how okay. to send that kind of fields? So go to your login dot html. <laughs> so far we have two rows. This is first row, mm -hmm. and this is second row. Uh, the the three rows, correct? So I want mm -hmm. to add another row. Okay, after so submit. Uh, you can add anywhere, not only after submit. You can. This is a hidden field, right? Okay. So user user will yeah. not see this field. So you can add this field anywhere. Okay. So I added third row. So inside that third row, what is this message? Okay, so inside the third row, what I want to do, I want to add another input field, input type equal to. This is not a text. This is a hidden. Okay. And uh, name I want to give hidden param. You can give any name. I had given name as a hidden parameter and value equal to. Some number okay. I want to pass. Some security number I want to pass. Okay. So this number I want to pass to the server, and I want to read it, and I want to display it. This number. Okay. Okay. Now go back to your servlet. So how to read? I want to read that parameter. Copy the same line. And what is the name I had given? Hidden parameter. Copy it. so now let me add some different hidden parameter and i want to display that number to the user so this one i'm okay. using security number okay now or this is ready hidden parameter is ready now i have to restart the browser now you can able to see here only two fields correct Yes. Now let me add username some value and password some other value. Submit it, and you can able to see three parameters. Yes, yes, yes. This okay. Parameter user is not providing, but still it is going as a hidden parameter. Got it. So this is the way if you want to send some information, you don't want to take from the user, but still you want to send from the backend side, you can able to send the parameters. by using got it okay hidden parameters okay okay now <coughs> go to our servlet so now what i want to do from this servlet i want to go to some different servlet okay now i want to send the request from servlet 1 to servlet 2 so how to send that one so we have to use the request dispatcher 
okay so yesterday whatever we have discussed right the similar concept i want to use and i want to send the request from one servlet to another servlet so how to send that one so basically i need to copy the two lines whatever yesterday i did let me copy it yeah this one request dispatcher i will copy these two lines and i will add in my servlet one and, then, and basically i want to send request to servlet 2 okay servlet 2 is not there i will create it okay so far it's clear right mm mhm okay servlet 2 i created and now if i will submit it it will print the details and the request will go to servlet 2 servlet yes and inside the servlet 2 what i want to do before going to the servlet in servlet 1 what i want to do i want to do the tax calculation got it i want to do some tax calculation okay integer total tax equal to some number <clears throat> okay now inside the servlet there is some information is there so i want to send this information to servlet 2 okay how to send the information from one servlet to another servlet got it so that is the my next uh, requirement so <clears throat> now the, you you did the tax calculation right now tax calculation just i hard coded hey in real time you can write a new function and you can do so many for you can write new formulas and you can apply tax calculation and you can get it it is just by using simple code yeah. java okay yeah. okay now what i want to do i want to send this information to the my second servlet and from there i want to read it got it okay so how to do that one so first before that what i had to do i had to add this field to the request object why because we are sending request object right to servlet 2 mm -hmm. so take the request yes. object and there is another field called set attribute so here okay. you can use some name so this is a total tax it's a kind of key and the value is okay total yeah 10.6 now you are sending your total tax into the request object and you are saving into the request object with some key the key is total tax right. and the value is okay now go to this servlet one. 2 and uh, so now it will come to do get method so here you can read the total tax so we have a request object right. here also request dot get parameter and what is the key you had given here total tax copy the key and pass it to here and just try to save this value into one variable and print it so how to print it so we have written already response dot <coughs> this is the way to print the value response dot get output stream so here okay. is the total tax so basically we are sending information from one servlet to another servlet and we are reading it and we are trying to display it in servlet 2 we don't okay. have any tax will just we are trying to read from the request object correct yes, yes. set attribute and we, we are here we are doing get at set parameter and get parameter yes okay, now go to your page go back to login page and just refresh it enter the username and password and submit it so we are not getting the tax total so go to your servlet where is this tax here instead of set attribute we have to use set parameter okay so 
set attribute. This is correct. Did see any spelling mistake or so here not set get at get attribute. So we have to use get attribute. So what is the difference between get parameter and get attribute, right? Get parameter mm. we have to use if you are trying to read the values from the form. Okay. But we are not reading the values from the form, right? We are trying to read from the mm. so one surlet to another surlet by setting the value, correct? So here we have to use get attribute. So basically it will return as an object, but we have to convert that to string. Got that. Yes, down cast is to string. And let me try now whether we can able to see it or not. Just to refresh it. Teaser cannot cast to string. So here there is a casting. So we are using JDK, I think 1.4, I guess. We need to where is JDK compiler. This is also correct. <coughs> See now the issue is Java dot lang dot integer cannot be cast to string and surlet number mm. 28. So let two and line number 28 to display the line number just right click here we select show line number so it will display so here right we are getting some error basically so okay. what is the value we are setting here integer right mm -hmm. here what is the original value total tax int, int right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but in, we in are it. trying to assign int to string Mm -hmm. So that is oh, okay. So that is what it is telling. Class cast exception cannot um, integer cannot be casted to int mm, to string. So we have to assign that to integer only. So okay. here they have to convert to this one. We have to assign as an integer. So this one you can. So now it should work. So this is called auto boxing. We have discussed in Core Java, right? Mm -hmm. Integer, int integer. Okay. So we are trying to convert from capital integer to small int. Got it. Okay. So this is called auto boxing. We have discussed in Core Java when we are discussing uh, JDK five features. So now let me mm -hmm. add username something and password something and submit it. Now we can able to read the total tax, correct? The total yes. tax we are adding into surlet one and we are reading it surlet two and we are printing it. Yes. So this is the way if you want to send some information from one surlet to another surlet, you can add it to request. So how do you add the request? So request a dot set attribute and add one key and add the value what you want to pass. Got it. Okay. And in another surlet, request a dot get attribute and give the same key and retrieve the value. Mm -hmm. And and this uh, value is available only for this request. This request means whenever you are clicking. You were clicking okay. and you were getting the response, right? So that's all. After that, from the request, these fields will be removed. Got it. If you want to, see, if you want to get the value again back, again you have to submit. Then it will create a new request, and again it will add the value. Again it will take it. So the life of the request is only for one. I mean, uh, request fields is only for one request. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so let's suppose you logged in into your server. Uh, sorry, in your application or a Gmail account, wherever, and you got some data from the database one time. You hit the database, okay. you got the that data, and you want to maintain that data till you log out. 
Okay. So you don't want to hit the database and again and again, but you want the data. I um, mean, uh, so you want to see display the data in so many pages. Got it. Okay. Want, basically, you are getting the data from the database, and you want to maintain the data, maybe some half an hour or one hour till the user did log out. Okay. So how to maintain that data? So it is not for one request. Once you log out, once you logged in, right? You do, you will you will click so many times. Correct. Yes. For each click is one request. Okay. So basically, you need that one data for every request. Hmm. Okay. How to maintain the data for entire life of a user? Okay. The life is entire life. I mean, till log in to log out. Okay. So how to maintain that kind of data? So basically, we have a session, right? <coughs> mm-hmm. So session when once user is logged in, session will be created. The session is available till user logged out or time out. Got it. So this okay. one we have already discussed, right? Yes, yes. So what I want to do now? <clears throat> yeah. So now ta total tax I am adding to the request, and it is available only for this particular request. If you are clicking again. So it will create new request object. For every okay. click, it will create a new request object. So that the data will be every time we are adding into the request. Every request we are adding and we are getting. Every request we are adding and we are retrieving. So now I don't want to add every time. I want to add one time and I want to retrieve n number of time. Okay. So how to do that one? So basically here we have to use the session. So how to get the session? You'll see request dot get session, so it will give mm -hmm. you HTTP session. Okay. So now you got the session, correct? So mm -hmm. inside the session, what you want to add? So first, right? Let me. So this you have a session object, right? In session, first let me take username, user ID. Sorry, user ID. Get user ID. So first time once you logged in the user, user ID will be blank. Correct? I'm yes. trying to take user ID from the session. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to take user ID from the session. So I had to convert this to downcast to string. So why? Because it will give object. Okay. So I'm I'm assuming inside the session user ID is already there. Okay. So I am trying to read it, and let me check the null value, whether it is available or not. If if user ID is Not equal to null. Okay. If user ID is not equal to null, sorry. If user ID equal to null, what I had to do? I had to go to the database and I had to get the user ID. Got it. Okay. So that task I had to do here. So I am not connecting to database, but I am writing here. I am connecting to DB and getting. user id so i have user okay. name by using the user name i have user name here so by using the user name i have to get the corresponding user id okay so user id is a number basically so user name is name by using the user name i have to get the user id <clears throat> okay so i connected the database and i got the user id as user id equal to Some nine zero nine zero is the user ID. Sorry, let me add okay. string. So this is i nine zero nine zero. Yes, this is my user ID. Okay. I connected to database and I got user ID. So this user ID I want to maintain a longer time. So I don't want to connect database again and again. I want to connect to database only one time, and I want to read this user ID whenever I need. Okay. Else, if user ID is not equal to null, means 
user id is available okay user id is user id is available so now if user id is null what i had to do i had to connect to database and i had to get the user id correct once i got the yes. user id i had to keep this user id into the session so how to okay. add into the session session dot set attribute what is the key i want to give i want to give key as a user id okay. what is the value whatever i got from the database so right now okay. i hard coded here but in real case you can connect to database and you can get this value okay okay now now what i want to do i want to read this user id in servlet 2 from the session so how to read so copy the same code and go to the servlet 2 so you have a session id and now display this user id to the user so user id okay. so what is the user id here user name okay now i added the user id into the session and now i want to read it okay so how to read it let me restart the server Okay, let me take a new browser. Okay. Close it. I close it this browser completely. Okay, now let me paste the URL. Okay, now our application is up and running. Let me clear all the log log messages. User name is I'm giving X Y Z, and password is P Q R, and submit it. <coughs> you can okay. able to see here, right? So you, you can able to read the user name, password, security number, total tax, and user ID. Also, we are getting correct. <laughs> did you see here yes, I yes. first time you logged in right so first time you logged in then mm -hmm. what happened i am connecting to db i'm connecting to db and getting user id correct so first time you logged in so user id is not there so you get, you went to database and you got it now assume the same request is trying to hit some other request same browser means same user correct mm -hmm. yes okay, now let me submit it now see there what what extra you got it user id is available It okay. is it is not connecting to database again, correct? Yes. And you can able to see the user. Now let me submit another request from the same user. Hmm. I am adding something and click. See, it is telling user ID is available. Okay. So once well, if, once time if you log in, if you want to maintain some data till log out. For the user, so you have to use the session. So it connected to database only one time, right? Mm, yes. And every time you can able to retrieve the user ID. See, let me add it again. See, user ID is available. Mm, yes. So that is the main purpose of session. Got it. But request means whenever you are clicking, so the data is available only for that click. If you are okay. clicking again. even the same user if you are clicking second time the data will be lost you need to recreate again the life span okay. of a request is only for one flow but okay. the life span of the session is to log in to log out okay so that is the basic difference between request and session okay and the hidden parameters so these are clears right i mean a hidden parameter mm. request in session okay yes. okay now there is another concept called cookies hmm that's again saving in the data right so which one yet uh, cookies is again cookies saving the data same. temporarily yeah, that is also same it's kind of similar thing so how cookies will work <coughs> so 
so first user correct mm -hmm. so user means browser basically it will come to okay. server server means servlet you can say so inside the ser servlet you can create a data so this is a request correct yes and it will come to servlet and from servlet you are getting the response back yes correct? so this is response mm -hmm. so inside the servlet <coughs> you can create some data and add into the response cookie okay so okay add to the response cookie and then it will come to the user okay so user having a browser right browser is having a cookie okay so whatever server is sending so that will be saved into the user browser cookie okay so whenever you are sending back again sending another request so the same cookie will be sent to the Mm. Servlet browser, uh, servlet. Okay. Servlet will read the cookie whatever it is available inside the request. Mm. So that okay, servlet can able to read the request, right? So that is the way session we are creating and we are sending and we are getting back every time. Okay. The session will be saved into the cookie and cookie will be sent as part of the response and whenever browser is reaching the response, that cookie will be saved into your browser. Okay. So that way, session ID is keep on exchanging from user to server. Okay. So your browser having some memory, right? So inside the memory, once mm -hmm. you got the response, the cookie will be saved into your browser. And whenever you are sending second request from the browser, it will read the cookie and again it will send as part of your request as a hidden parameter. Right. Okay. So, so that is the way we are maintaining the state of the user. Okay. If if you disable that uh, cookie, right? In you have an option for your browser. <clears throat> if you disable that cookie, then you, it will not work. You will get some. Can you try? You no, know, in your um, a Firefox or anything, try to disable your browser mm -hmm. and try to log into your uh, HDFC bank or something. You will get an error message. Okay. Cookie is disabled. Please enable like that. Oh really? Okay. Yes, yes. If you, why, why is it like that? <laughs> that's what. If you logged in one time, so server will create mm -hmm. session ID for you, correct? Yes. And if you send, when once you get the response back, we need to save that session ID somewhere, right? Otherwise, we need to send back to the user server, correct? Otherwise, it is not able to identify. Yes, yes. If you are not able to save the session ID in your browser. Hmm. So then, what server? What server will try to read the cookie from your uh, request? Then it will say, I mean, what you say, uh, cookie is disabled in your browser. Please try to enable something like that. Okay, okay, okay. So that's what we need cookies. Got it. Otherwise, server will not able to maintain the state, right? Mm. Server don't have any identification. Who is sending the request? Okay. If Got you it, have it. a valid or unique session ID, so then it can able to identify this ID is came from this cookie. So we need to send this response okay. to this user. Okay. So that's that is the main purpose of. If you see in Google also, you will get this kind of uh, issues, so many places. Okay. Okay. You can try this one. Just try to disable cookie from your browser and try to log in, and you are not able to log in. Okay. So this is the way to disable the cookie. So there is so many ways to disable disable the cookie from IE, Firefox, Google Chrome, wherever. You try to disable it, and whenever trying to log in, then you will get a message. A cookie, please access, please enable the cookie. See here, there is a message. Open the browser from home screen, then press the key. User privacy, not able. Please manage. So this you can mm -hmm. disable the cookie, and you try to log in, and you will get a message. Yeah, yeah, and I've seen some other websites where it says when you log into the website, the 
will say that uh, this website is using cookies. Yes, 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 yes. So you will get some error message. Please, this website need uh, cookies. Please enable it. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So otherwise, they are not able to maintain its state, right? So they have to store the session ID yeah. in your browser, and again you need to send back. Again, it will give back the session ID. Again, you have to save it. Again, you need to send back. Got it. Kind of ID it. card. When you are going to office, right? Mm -hmm. You have to show your ID card. Go to and come back with your ID card. Yeah, and yeah. Then next, you have to carry. If you don't have ID card, then they will not allow you. But uh, the next time, in that the same user log in from the same browser, the next time you, he will be getting a different session ID, right? Yes, obviously. So okay. let's suppose you I logged in into the HDFC from this from this URL from this browser. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now I will get the session ID something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I forget to um, logged out. Then I went to office and I I came back next day when I am trying to click OK right. I mean some uh, transactions. Mm -hmm. What will happen? It will send same session ID to session expired. Same session ID to okay. the server. But server side there is a session expiry. We are maintaining right set max in active interval. So what okay. will happen? Session side, this server ID is already removed from session okay. database. Okay. Even though you are sending session ID, but that session ID is not there inside the server. Okay. Then what it will say? Session expired. Please log in again back. Got it. Okay. But if you try to log in within half an hour, what are the session span of time? Then it is this value, it is, this session ID, it will maintain so that you can able to access it. Right. So that way we are maintaining the state of a user. Otherwise, session okay. server don't know anything, right? Who is trying to log in? To whom I need to send this response? You don't have any identification, uniqueness. Got it. Yes. And these are very very important for uh, interview. I mean, as of uh, interview point of view, the session and all. Okay. So just try to. <clears throat> okay, you can visit this video, but you can uh, verify the video again back. And if you have any questions, we will discuss again tomorrow. Okay. okay. Sure, sure. No so I'm using the same browser. Still, my session is available. Well, because I didn't mention any time, right? So if you are not mentioning mm -hmm. any time, it's available for longer time. So whenever I'm hitting, the session ID will just keep on saving into the browser memory so that I can able to get back. Okay. So if at all if there is there is so many other topics, is there kind of hacking kind of thing? So that is not required. So how we can able to steal the session ID and all. Okay, you can, uh, I will upload this video and you can uh, have a look. If you have any questions, we will discuss again back tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. Sure, sure, no yeah, fine. yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah, thanks. All right. So tomorrow, same time, right? Yeah, tomorrow, same time, yes.